Welcome to Wyoming Web Ed Radio. This is James Capti, Wyoming teacher and buckaroo for our ride today. I am partnered with our lead rider, Maya Williams, UW professor who's molding teachers' minds and keeping us in line. We are riding into week two of this amazing educational adventure. How are you, Maya? I'm great. I'm so excited for today. Well, let's take a second and learn a little bit about our host. We had Cowboy Joe with us last week, and, and this week we've got Maya. And so, Maya, our viewers and listeners are raring to know, what brought you into education? Thanks, James. And hi, listeners. Um, really, I think education found me. I started in my undergrad with a totally different plan in mind, and I found my way through the content um, and found, I ended up a high school teacher. Um, and I really enjoy teenagers. I love working with them. I love the things that they bring to the classroom. Um, and I found my passion for innovation and higher ed kind of the same way. It just found me on my path. Um, and I think that's one of the really exciting things about school is that you have opportunities to try things out. And when you find something that you love, there's a wealth of learning that you can dig into. So I feel really fortunate to have a career in teaching. Well, I, I think every, all of your listeners, as well as myself, uh, I appreciate that in, in the sense of, I, I think education does find us. Uh, those that land in education land here because it, it, it's a calling. And I, and I know for myself that going through school was sometimes a challenge. And I, and I thought to myself, you know, being, being the teacher that, that I wanted uh, would help. And so that's, that drove me into education. And, and this ride has been an amazing adventure. And so, you know, here we are. But uh, enough about us. Uh, let's, let's get this show onto the dirt road. Head them up. And move, move them out. Wild Web Ed Radio, here we come. Last week, we had the Buffalo Bill Center of the West on talking about their virtual field trips. And with that, George talked to us about all that they offer. And now we're really excited to get a chance to look at what it looks like from the classroom, what it looks like from a teacher's point of view, instead of from uh, the, the, the Buffalo Bill Center of the West point of view. So we're going to get some insight from a teacher today. And before we dive into that part of the interview, I just want to remind you guys, if you have any questions as they arise, please share them uh, in the chat if you're in the Zoom. If you're on Twitter, you can hit those at the, the Wild Web Ed hashtag, and we will come back around and try to answer any of those. And just share with us, because this is, we are better together. And the more we work together, uh, the better our, our students will have it. So let's give a while. Wyoming Web Ed, welcome to Liliana Sanchez from Sweetwater School District. Hi, Ms. Sanchez, how are you today? Hello there, I'm doing well. That is awesome. We are so happy to have you and uh, taking time out of, out of summer to help us and help other teachers listen and just share your insights and, and see, where, uh, see what we can, can do for, for teachers in education. So tell us a little bit, bit about your school and what grade levels you've worked with and we'll, we'll just start from there. All right, so um, most people know me as Mrs. Sanchez. I work at Westridge Elementary here in Rock Springs, Wyoming and that is Sweetwater One County. I have been teaching for three years now and I have worked with all sorts of students. I have worked with EL population. I was an intervention teacher as a Title I teacher. So I worked from kinder all the way to fourth grade. Um, last year was my first year teaching in a classroom, like my actual, actual classroom rather than groups. And I started in fourth grade, which if you would have asked me at the beginning of my teaching career, that would not have been the grade that I would have picked. But I totally fell in love with it. And here we are again with year number two for fourth grade. Well, I can, I can truly appreciate uh, my, much like uh, Maya's background, I spent most of my career in high school 
and just over the last few years had a chance to work in a totally different grade level in, in elementary and third, fourth, and fifth. Would have never seen myself in that, that age group, but it, it, it's, it's been fun. It's been a wonderful time. And just, uh, just within education, there's so much to explore. Last week, we had George Miller from the, the Buffalo Bill Center of the West on, and he talked us through a lot of what they have to offer in, in that sense, uh, uh, as far as virtual field trips and Skype in the classroom and those kind of things. But what we really wanted was we wanted a teacher that had used uh, the Buffalo Bill Center of the West and worked with them. And we wanted to get some insight from how it worked for kids and for you as well. So the first question, let's, what, what do you think is a, a good reason that teachers should explore this? You know, I think that we just have to try new resources and that's what this online learning made us do. I know that a lot of us like to stay inside our comfort zone and um, just experiencing something new that is relatable to our students and it's in their own backyard. Okay, and so just to kind of dive in right into that, uh, what, what advice would you give to teachers that are, are listening? And, and we can start with kind of a mix of field trips, but we can start uh, with the idea of what would you give educators advice on as far as getting involved with the Buffalo Bill Center of the West? You know, my advice would just be to reach out to other colleagues. This started out because one of my teammates actually sent an email to another coworker from another school, and they just suggested a couple of places to start with. We emailed them and looked at their website, and it just seemed something that our kids would be interested on. It had many aspects to give to teachers. For example, they give um, lessons that are already planned out so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Um, our students were highly engaged during all of the field trips and it was nice that they had already learned about it in the classroom and they could hear it from another person. And so you used it multiple times um, from our previous conversation. And so talk, talk to our listeners and viewers about uh, what, what you used it for. Okay, so yeah, we ended up using them for a total of three times and we like to call it like fun Friday type of thing. So the last three weeks of school was when we scheduled our trips. And all we did was just send an email and we were able to sign up our entire grade level, not just my classroom, but the whole entire fourth grade level. And they worked with us. They gave us different time slots. Uh, we used them for, um, I think we used three different field trips and they all covered science, history, and social studies. Um, the first one we used them for, we wanted to just get our feet wet and see how it went. We did the animal adaptation. So as fourth graders, we teach, fourth grade teachers, we teach that standard at the beginning of the year. And it was nice to see the discussions that happened. And it was nice to see our students engaged in the conversations and seeing how they actually paid attention and were able to explain their thinking to somebody else. The second clip we we used them for. Um, it was related to plain Indians and trappers and trail blazers. Um, we were in the middle of teaching that unit. So it actually helped to have the lesson that they had already learned and then be able to tie it all together with their science and history and social studies standards. So that, those that sounds great. Sounds great, Liliana. I, we have a question. Um, it sounds like it matches really well with the fourth grade, but the question is, how do you think that this virtual field trip would work for other grades K-12? I think that if they could just adjust it easily. Uh, we had siblings actually join our video call during the field trips, and um, they were as engaged as the fourth graders. We had little kindergartners, second graders watching along. Um, every time it was something new, 
and especially they especially enjoyed the stories. So I could see how it could go from a kindergarten classroom to just reading a story and asking some simple questions and then bumping it up to higher grade levels where you can adjust the vocabulary for them and those pre-activities that they provide. You know, Wonderful. when we talk- have... oh. No, go ahead, James. Uh, no problem, Maya. When we were, uh, we had George on last week, he talked about how one of those things that you alluded to earlier, that contacting them and working with the Buffalo Bill Center of the West is a big deal because they will uh, modify and adjust and meet the needs of, of whatever whatever classroom, whether it's kindergarten up to into uh, college as well. And so it's exciting to hear from, from a teacher side that, yeah, you feel that it, it, it's applicable across the board. So you, let's, let's take a step into this. So you were actually in the mix of this COVID situation where kids were out of school and your kids were all on devices. So you had all of your class on separate devices connecting to this virtual field trip. Talk, talk through how that worked for you. All right. So Yes, it was during the middle of this pandemic. Um, we had just actually gotten out of some breaks. We had a week in between. And then us as teachers, we started scrambling and trying to figure out what we were going to do next. As we got into a routine, some of our students started asking about field trips and if we were able to go to our field trips because fourth grade has many, many field trips. It's the year that we hit Wyoming history, so we go South Pass, we go to Fort Bridger, and we had already scheduled some field trips, which unfortunately they were canceled. So we wanted to give students the opportunity to still do some type of field trip, but of course on online platforms. So um, they loved it. They totally ate it up. They loved hearing from someone new. They loved the activities that George was able to provide for us. And they were so engaged. So we have a question related to that. Um, it sounds like you did a really good job with your students and they were really excited to be on the field trip. Um, but what, what kind of strategies did you think about for students who might not have engaged with the field trip? Or how do you get those involved that aren't um, really participating? So we definitely ran into those issues. Um, we didn't have control over that because each student had to connect at the certain time. It was live. So if they didn't make it to the field trip, then they kind of missed out. Um, I did record my first field trip just to see what it was about, just so I could reflect afterwards of what went well, what we could adjust for the next field trip. Um, since George was talking the entire time, you couldn't really see the students, so I decided to share the link on my Google Classroom. And those students that were not able to participate during the field trip, they were, it gave them an option to replay the video. And I, we had a really high participation because they were just interested about hearing about the stories that George had to tell about seeing um, an actual museum that is five hours away from us. So yeah, that's how we kept them engaged. Thank you. Uh, so with, in, in thinking about that, thinking about what next year looks like and, and really none of us know what this upcoming school year looks like, uh, whether we'll be back to in, in the classroom the majority of the time or, or what that may look like with a hybrid or online. But with that in mind, is this def, I mean, how do you see this fitting into your classroom in, in a more brick and mortar setting where you've got kids in the room uh, potentially with you? How do you see yourself using this? So I hadn't heard of them sending out trunks and stuff, and I feel like it's a great resource to actually use in the classroom. As I went on their website and started looking more, it does give you an option for them to ship out a trunk with items. So that would definitely be something that could be used in the classroom or online dur during a video call. Um, we definitely want to use them again during our first unit at the beginning of the year since we will probably not have any more field trips scheduled at the beginning of the year. 
Um, and even at the end of the year, I feel like it was a great wrap up for our students. They definitely got to showcase what they learned about their specific person. They got to tie all those vocabulary pieces throughout the year and the stories that we read in our social studies books to actually seeing the videos and um, the items that they have to showcase. Okay, so one of the one of the big things that I, I, I know from conversations with teachers is is we're pretty good. I mean, we get trained in college and thank you to Maya and Joe for helping teachers get ready for for school. We get trained to kind of work on that engagement and see that engagement with our kids in the classroom. But I, I guess knowing that the Buffalo Bill Center of the West has been doing Skype in the classroom and doing this online tool for a long time what were what were or were there any engagement tricks that you learned from watching george or, and going through that that you're like wow i'm i'm going to use that if, if i have to teach online or teach in in a virtual with my kids i'm going to i'm going to steal those kind of things let's 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 share some of those if you have any absolutely um coming from an interventionist background um i noticed this in the videos and their field trips that you always have to keep it moving type of thing. If you give students the chance to just uh, mellow down and do their work, half of the time they're not going to be doing their work. You just have to keep them engaged, keep asking them questions, make sure they're on task. So that was definitely something that was reassuring, just move on from one activity to another. It doesn't have to be lengthy, it doesn't have to be all pretty and all fancy, you just have to keep it moving. That's a, that kind of goes right along with the theme of wild web ad radio. We, we get on our horses and we kind of keep it moving. Uh, so that, that's, that's a great, great point to bring up that as, as far as being online, uh, it, it's, a, it's pretty similar to the, the, the normal classroom, if you will, as far as keep it moving. Uh, you're maybe even more planned out um, in the sense of I'm, I'm going to try to target some things and, and move with that. So at, as we're as we're kind of wrapping up to the end of the ride, the dust is getting you know a little bit heavy as we're we're busting through this. But what advice would you give to anybody out there, any educator or principal or um, parent even listening, as far as thinking about virtual field trips? Maybe it isn't the Buffalo Bill Center of the West, but maybe it is in the sense of what would, what advice would you give them when they're when they're thinking about planning for a, a virtual field trip? Um, the advice I would give them is just to start local. Uh, we are planning on reaching out to some of the uh, places that we do our field trips to see if they're going to offer anything online related to see if we could set anything up just so it keeps it relatable for our students. I know that there are some places in like videos Yellowstone, and that could go great with teaching about ecosystems. Um, it opens up discussions for your students. Like I didn't know, one of my students actually has been to Buffalo Bill Center of the West, which I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. You know, she got to share her story. She got to tell the students how big it was. And that sparks like some ideas for students like, hey, once this is over, I wanna go visit this. I got to see it online. So maybe it's something that maybe I will try to do down the line. And then just asking questions to other people in your district to see what worked and what didn't. That would be my advice. Just don't be afraid to try something new. You might end up liking it. And if you don't, you could at least say you tried. Well, what, what, what great advice. Uh, if we're going to model learning, we've got to be willing to take some risk. And, and thank you, Mrs. Sanchez, for, for sharing your, your thoughts on that. And as you were talking, it, it definitely reminded me of the idea of it. This is a time when maybe maybe we as, as educators can help some of those local entities, whether it's a local museum or those local field trips and create our own field trip there uh, and, and help help the businesses where they may not have those skills. So you're, you're, you're getting the, the juices flowing uh, of thinking of ideas that we can do across the state. And I really appreciate, appreciate your time. And, and, and we're glad you, you jumped in here and, and joined us today. Maya, you have any closing comments or, or thoughts for, for Mrs. Sanchez? I'm just really thankful you could join us. And I loved your closing comments about giving it a try. I think that's a lot of what we do in our classrooms is we take those risks and they typically pay off for students. So thank you so much for sharing today. Of course, thanks for having me. 
All right. Thank you, Mrs. Sanchez. Well, that brings us to the end of today's ride. And next week, we're going to saddle up for a conversation with Linda Crawford from Weston 7. And they have a unique push going on to invest in personalized learning, which probably is even better investment during this, this time of COVID. So we're excited for that conversation. And next week, same time, same place. Happy trails Happy to trails you. To you. Until we see you next Tuesday. See you later. Bye, everyone.